Thank you very much for coming over here. So yeah, Alexander Krug, CEO and founder of Soft Games. Uh, we are the world's largest um, publisher and distributor of HTML5 games. Uh, we have built uh, and uh, distributed over 400 um, HTML5 games so far all over the world. And we are reaching with our games around 30 million monthly active users um, globally, basically. Um, so the next 20 minutes, I will try to explain to you why um, HTML5 instant games will disrupt the, uh, the app stores in 2017. There are a few things um, HTML5 developers and also the platforms have to deliver um, back then. Um, but at least there are a lot of new opportunities, especially for developers out there. So I mean, it may be hard to believe, um, but the app boom is finally over. Yeah, after almost a decade of massive growth, actually. Uh, in 2016, uh, apps started to eat themselves. Um, despite the fact yeah, the users are spending more and more time within the apps, um, the growth um, of some apps uh, happened at the expense of others, basically. And um, so it happened especially with games, actually. And this was the first time that games declined in 2016, as you can see from here, from, from Flurry, which was released a, a few uh, weeks ago, actually. So while social networking and messaging apps uh, had an amazing uh, year for this year, so they grow by almost 400%, which is amazing, actually. So I mean, this points me, uh, or in general, um, to the end of the app gold rush, basically. Yeah? There are just too many apps out there, while the user resource um, or time is basically limited. Um, and this results basically what everybody knows, actually, that um, only the biggest app developers can succeed. And this only comes with a um, massive amount of spending in, in marketing, actually. And there are tons of other let's say, issues which are coming up with the traditional store-based approach, actually, uh, like long release cycles, um, um, yeah, low retention. And I think the most, um, yeah, uh, most uh, biggest fact over here is basically that small revenue opportunities for smaller developers, actually, of the majority of developers. So just 6% um, are earned by 99% of their um, biggest publishers, actually. So I think it's time um, to disrupt the their app store, um, or a store-based approach, basically. Um, so let's look back to the numbers once again. So it seems, basically, what users really want when they use your mobile device is um, what they've been built for. Yeah, it's just all about communicating um, with other users, actually. Um, so basically, the first when I understood this was Apple when they opened up um, their communication tool iMessage for third-party developers with the release of iOS 10 um, last September. Um, they opened up like a totally new distribution channel um, for apps, basically, which can make, or which has uh, the goal to make communication richer with mainly stickers, but also for games and other tools, actually. Um, since the launch, um, you can all this, use these extra features um, directly within iMessage. You don't have to leave um, the app anymore. You can do everything there, uh, basically, theoretically. I will come back to this uh, later on again. And so far, users are thrilled. Yeah? Like the iMessage apps installs or app installs basically are skyrocketing. Um, so right now, it's very hard to estimate if this um, success will last over the, the next couple of months or within uh, 2017. Um, but I assume, basically, the current trend won't last very long, actually. Um, the biggest problem, basically, what I see uh, is the user experience when I'm receiving um, or the general user experience of using iMessage is basically not as good as it should be, actually. So let's have a look how it looks right now. So basically, it's like this. Um, a friend of mine sends me um, a message through iMessage. Um, I have to click on it. Uh, but if I don't have this um, app installed, basically, I have to go at first to the App Store. Then I have to type in uh, my credentials. I have to wait for the download. And then I have to find somehow a way back to the app, actually. Um, so basically, like this, before I'm able to use it, I'm forced to download this app. Yeah? So basically, what you're doing is you're spamming your friend uh, with uh, tons of download links to the App Store, uh, which always leads yeah, to the App Store, basically. So it reminds me a little bit to the early days of uh, Facebook cameras, actually. 
So, okay, just think, okay, hi, I have installed the app. So I said I have to find the way back to my conversation with my friend. I have to again click on, um, on this image I received from him, and then I'm inside the game or whatever action over there. So that's not really convenient for the user. Um, and uh, also, like, not, I said, I'm not, not very good at user experience uh, with many unnecessary, unnecessary steps involved, actually. So what users want, basically, is they want to consume content instantly, yeah, without having to download and install anything. Um, simplicity, basically, is the key. Um, as users, yeah, I want easy solutions. Users want easy solutions um, with instant access, actually. So Apple has made it basically very simple for developers to build for iMessage, um, or for build for the platform in general. Um, but there is a substantial awareness and usage problem, problem on the user side, actually, and um, mainly due to the lack of simplicity. Yeah, and the platform will not grow without um, yeah, having users who are using it, basically. Um, so basically, iMessage is all about peer-to-peer -peer interactions. So this means that Apple should um, remove the biggest friction of the App Store, which is basically the download and install process itself. And when I receive a link from a friend, um, I should click on it, and the app should start running instantly and immediately uh, without the need of an install. And iMessage apps would be definitely more successful when the whole usage uh, would be more, way more simple, basically. And this will be the trend for 2017, simplicity. Uh, and this will disrupt the traditional App Store approach. And uh, Apple shouldn't be afraid of it. Uh, the best example, basically, you can see is with Amazon Dash buttons. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Basically, you can just buy a button and um, put it somewhere in your home. And when you click on it, you get, like, I don't know, Illy Cafe coffee, for example. And this basically also shows that Amazon is way more open uh, than Apple, basically, because they say, hey, you don't have to go through my store or to my website anymore to make any, any, any purchase. For them, it's all about revenue, basically, and it doesn't matter how the revenue is coming from, actually. All right, so, um, so beside that, beside Apple um, with iMessage, also a lot of other messengers understood in 2016 that um, they have a power to create an alternative um, app distribution platform, basically. So in 2016, um, yeah, Facebook Messenger, Kick, Skype, Telegram, Line, Viber, and tons of other guys uh, opened up, <clears throat> open up their own chatbot framework um, to developers. And at the beginning, there was um, basically super big hype, basically. And um, unlike um, like apps, bots also offers um, instant access to all kinds of services. Um, users don't have to download and install something, don't have to register something. They can just use everything what they want within the bot, basically. Um, and the major point over here is that they can stay within the messenger without ever leaving it, actually. Um, unfortunately, bots didn't take off. So I was also pushing um, bots uh, for games, basically, back uh, last year, actually. Um, but the biggest challenge over there is um, the discovery. So basically, I'm still, I have never got it, how to um, yeah, discover a chatbot on Messenger. Probably I'm too stupid for this, but if I'm too stupid with this, who is handling or working with this every day, so who should my mom or my wife or whatever discover this kind of things there? So there is also, um, that should be like also the, the key for um, these kind of platforms or the messengers should be simplicity. Very, very easy to discover my bot, to use my bot actually. And that's currently not the case right now, but from what we heard, basically, is that a lot of messengers are working on this um, to make it more easier uh, um, so that, basically, um, bots can't be ignored in 2017 anymore. Um, the good thing is, basically, I predicted in um, last year in July when I had like my talk on Casual Connect in San Francisco that the combination of bots with HTML5 uh, will be super uh, um, powerful, actually. Um, and this was actually what happened, actually, at the end of uh, 2016, uh, when Facebook Messenger it decided to um, launch instant games uh, on there, uh, on, on within the Messenger. Uh, they created a very fluid and simple progress, uh, which goes a step further than just um, the bots, actually. And they're following the simplicity rule. Users can very easily discover um, the, um, the instant games, basically. They can consume them and share them um, instantly without any download and install, actually. Um, so how does it work, basically? I'm, I'm sure if everybody knows it, but you know, when I'm um, 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 in, a, in a chat frame, basically, with my friend, I, I have like this small um, 
like gaming icon there. I click on it, and then I have receive like an, um, a view, like an overview of different different games, and I can just um, press the, the play button. Then the game loads instantly, and I can start playing basically. Um, this is the most important shift in distribution uh, model in the recent times, actually. Um, users are giving I said, like instant access um, to apps or to games, um, delivered whenever and however they want, basically. And that's the next necessary phase of mobile, actually. Um, so instant games, or HTML5 instant games in general, will disrupt uh, the ecosystem for app developers, platforms, device, and uh, device makers and, and carriers, actually. And the good thing for the messenger, for sure, is you know, they are kept, uh, like users are kept within the messenger. Um, you can do everything within the messenger. So there's no need to leave anymore. And um, yeah, you don't have to leave your comfort zone anymore. And this is basically what also other messengers will do um, or will follow, say, within 2017. And this is like really, really good news for HTML5 or general game developers, actually. Um, so I said, like, the technology behind instant games is HTML5. And you might heard about of HTML5. There was something going on uh, a couple of years ago. Um, the big hype of HTML5 was back in 2013, 2014. Um, why? What happened afterwards? Um, basically, it took a while until the technology, or not the technology was ready, but also like the devices uh, where they have been running on uh, got better. And now it's the time where basically the performance of the phones uh, and tablets is finally good enough to run high-quality games or high-quality content. Um, um, like games in the, in the browsers, actually. So what we did as literally um, is like this. You know, we, we built for BlackBerry Messenger um, the instant games platform. Um, we featured over 400 uh, competitive games over there. You can compare uh, very easily with your friends your, your progress and compete in, in leaderboards, actually. And uh, we are also very proud to be one of the um, 17 game or launch partners of instant games on Facebook Messenger. Um, so I said, you know, how to use it, you can just simply um, send a challenge to your, fr to your friend, and you can click on it, start playing anime, uh, immediately without the need any, uh, of any download or install, basically. Um, and this boosts, let's say, amazingly, engagement, retention, and uh, reality. And I'm also very proud to say that uh, currently the Soft Games is also on Instant Messenger, uh, or Instant Games on the Messenger, the largest publisher uh, right now. We have uh, three games live there, 2020 Connect, um, Space Invaders, and uh, also um, a tower match. And especially the tower match um, is, we took like a game principle or concept which is like very simple uh, and well known as well for sure. Uh, but what we did is basically we took the specifics of the Facebook uh, Instant Games platform. Um, like, you know, I, I, I have to see what was, my, what was the progress of my friends basically. And so instead of just competing with a, with a high score, which is for me, like, it was just a number. I'm actually really competing against my friend within the thread. As you can see here, when I'm building the towers, I can see the picture of my, my friends. Very easy, um, but it was um, one of the successful games um, so far, actually. And basically, these are just the early days of instant games, actually. So we can expect like more and more game modes coming over there, um, like cooperative game modes, multiplayer game modes. Um, just Another way of fun to um, yeah, keep touch with my, my friends or my family, actually. Um, it's now a little bit up to the game developers to think about, okay, how can we, let's say, replicate the success of Facebook Canvas games back in was it, 2012 and something like this. And uh, the success factor for them was basically virality. So games went viral very easy. So I was inviting my friend, and my friend was like, ah, you know this one. Um, so, we, the game developers especially need to think about innovative ways to fuel this kind of reality, actually. Um, so we have to think about, okay, hey, um, we have to um, reach out to an entirely new audience, basically, who is currently not involved with playing games within the Messenger. Yeah? That audience I'm talking about is still using apps or the App Store, basically, to discover games. So how can we reach the remaining 4 billion users who are using messengers, not only instant um, um, uh, uh, Facebook Messenger, but also the other ones, lines and vibers and whatever stuff there. Um, gaming is the, the, one of the most popular um, yeah, activities on mobile, next to messaging and entertainment, actually. Four out of five smartphone uh, users, or uh, device holders, basically, they are, they're playing a game on the device. Yeah? Um, so in half of the adults play a game every day. So the opportunity we have over here is just huge. Um, so HTML5, or in general, instant games, will be able to disrupt an entire industry. Um, but it may take some more time, basically. Um, 
as we have to weigh the, I have to wait, oh my God, as we have to change the way how users are, um, or in general, how do people get to apps, basically. Uh, we have to educate them on the pain points. We have to explain to them how bad is the solution um, they are using right now, and how much easier would it be to just stay within their beloved messenger and, um, yeah, play the games there or use the content there without, instead of just downloading an, an app store. Um, basically, I still believe that the app stores will remain like a good discovery tool for apps in general, but social discovery through messengers will make a bigger, much bigger impact. And the best example for this basically is um, when you look back to, to Flappy Bird, the size of Flappy Bird. It was not the mechanics of the app store who made Flappy Bird big. It was the social effort of Twitter and Facebook, basically. And the App Store just um, served as a source for downloads. Uh, just think about this kind of thing. All right. Um, so let's finish my talk with some predictions uh, for 2017. One of the predictions already got reality, actually. Um, so one thing is basically, I believe that, um, or it has to be like this, um, that HMF Instant games um, will evolve from very simple casual games um, to more complex graphics-heavy uh, ones while they're taking the full advantage of the viral features of uh, Messenger, actually. And then as well, they result, uh, this will basically result in, uh, in a new business model for HTML5 games, um, um, which is like basically free-to-play in combination with rewarded, uh, with rewarded ads. Um, right now, how HTML5 games are mainly monetized is through advertisement. So this would be basically a very big move uh, for developers and also for platform posts because this opens up uh, much bigger opportunity, basically, for everybody. So, and the proper monetization solution will also lead to a very, very healthy um, ecosystem for developers and also for the platforms of the messengers in 2017. So let us change together how, basically, users will consume content or games in general. Yeah, instant, um, instantly inside the messengers um, without any download or install, basically. So let us begin the evolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Um, I think we have time for one or two questions. Anybody has a question? Um, it's a technical question. Uh, you mentioned uh, HTML5. Uh, out of curiosity, what SD, uh, tool do you use to make your games, please? Like SDK or? Ah, which because kind of engines basically we're yeah, using? Engine. Um, that's a good question. I think we're using several engines. I think we're using Phaser, and we used to uh, experiment as well with Hex and um, Pixie.js. So like a lot of different engines. Um, just try out, okay, who's the best for, let's say, our, um, uh, with our projects. So I cannot give you an exact recommendation. This engine is the best one. Um, I'm like, there are tons of free tools out there, which is um, um, like, super good right now. Um, um, so yeah, just go for uh, like three I just mentioned basically with these ones. Thanks. Um, so Alex, you showed a picture of Clash up there. So would it be possible to do something as complex as that now with in HTML5 on Messenger? I mean, is, it, is the platform ready for something that complex and deep? Um, Let's say like this. Um, as I said, it's very early days, basically, so we're also experimenting uh, a little bit. Um, but one of the games, for example, which is live on, uh, on the instant, uh, on, on instant games on, on Facebook, basically, is Everwing. Uh, so it's like a very, very complex um, like space shooter game, I would say, which opens up um, the, its complexity over the time. So, um, I, so from what I know, what, what Facebook says, okay, hey, this is like the, the minimum requirement for them on the device side. Um, I would definitely say that WebGL games for, would be definitely possible. Um, so it's just like trying it out. Yeah? So there are no boundaries right now, no uh, restrictions basically from, from somebody who says like, hey, no, that's, that's not possible. No. I mean, that's the good thing with a new platform. You can always try everything out. and. Um, yeah, make it make it possible basically, and I'm, I'm, I believe it definitely. From what I saw basically in the what's coming up, also next or the next projects, um, there are more and more complex games um, possible and coming. So definitely. Okay. Great, thank you. I think this is about the time that we had for questions. Thank you very much, and thank yeah. you everyone for coming. Thanks as well. Huh?